In this lesson, we're gonna explore the functionality and usage of Azure Distributed Denial of Service Protection. There are many, many different types of distributed denial of service attack. These are basically designed to take down your service. Now they use different methods. There are things where I might use a volumetric, i.e. I'm just gonna bombard your service with things like an ICMP flood, maybe a UDP flood. There's just so much traffic, it soaks up all of the bandwidth of your service. Then there are things that target particular protocols. So I'm offering, there's a, a protocol that maybe TCP or UDP that my application is using on top of. So here I might have malformed packets that I'm gonna send. Uh, a sin flood, a ping of death. I basically have something in my operating system or intermediary layer, maybe a load balancer or a firewall that has a set of resources to talk that protocol. And with a protocol level type of attack, I'm basically gonna exhaust those resources. So then it runs out of resource and it can't respond. There's also things like application type attacks. So this is where I'm looking at some inherent weakness to my application, like HTTP flooding, a slow post, a slow read, to make the application unavailable to users. So the whole point of this is to break my availability. I'm gonna impact that through these types of attacks. Now when I think about my resources in Azure, all of them are protected by a basic distributed denial of service protection. So no matter what the resource, this public facing resource has this protection. But the challenge of this protection is really designed to protect the Azure fabric. So it's designed to identify and protect against huge scale attacks. That's what it's focused on. I cannot modify those thresholds. I cannot see metrics about it. I cannot get into insight about it. It's there to really protect the fabric. That will give me some benefit, obviously, but if I have a very finite amount of resource, this may not kick in until way before I've exhausted whatever I have. So then there's the concept, remember we have a virtual network and I have resources within that virtual network that may use public IPs. So if I have these public IPs created and are linked to some resource in the virtual network, what I can actually do is I can create a standard distributed denial of service protection plan. And then I can link the plan to a virtual network. And I can actually link it to multiple virtual networks. So I could have another VNet and I could link it to that one as well. Now obviously this is what I pay for. I'm paying for this enhanced protection. But what this enhanced protection actually does is it's gonna tune itself, so it's gonna use machine learning to tune what is my normal type of interaction from me. So I have adaptive tuning. It's also gonna give me very rich reporting about what is happening and I get metrics. So if I have metrics, remember, I can then use things like Azure Monitor Alerts to alert, hey, there's some metric above a certain number and then I can use action rules to actually go and do something about that. There's also the idea of rapid response. So if I am being attacked, what it will actually do is there are humans I can talk to while the attack is happening to help me. And then there's also, if I have auto scale for my resources, there's the idea of kind of credits that I can get. If this didn't give me the right protection, I can prove, hey, I scaled out to 20 instances because there was this denial of service attack actually happening. And if we go and look, we can see exactly the details of that standard protection. So it goes through and it's showing me, hey look, so this is what we get with the free basic. And remember, this is all I can do is if I have a resource that does not exist within a VNet. I cannot apply standard if it doesn't live within the VNet. 
So I get the active traffic monitoring and always on detection and automatic attack mitigations. That's what I can do. But if I add standard, so I create the plan and link it to the virtual network that has the resource that links to the public IP, then I get those availability guarantees, the cost protection, so I get those credits. Migration policies tuned to the customer's application so it learns what's normal. I get metrics, I get alerts, I get reports, I get flow logs, and I get that distributed denial of service, rapid response support. So I get all of those with that standard. And again, the point is you would buy the plan and then a single plan can be used across multiple subscriptions and multiple virtual networks. So that's kind of the important point. I buy the plan and then I can link it to multiple VNets or multiple subscriptions. Now it does cover up to 100 public IPs and then there's an additional cost for resources beyond that 100. So this is the goal of this distributed denial of service protection. Hey, yes, we get this basic one for any public facing Azure resource. But if I want it to be more tuned, more in line with what my application normally sees, and I want maybe that better help, I want that insight, I maybe want credit if something doesn't go to plan, then I buy a standard plan and I link it to my virtual network.